Psychology, is it biblical? Hi friend, this is Dr. John Barella welcoming you to an interesting message. I believe you'll learn quite a bit today. Is psychology biblical? God tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The basic difference between psychology and the Bible is that psychology focuses on self, the Bible focuses on God's Word and God Himself. Psychology excludes God and the Spirit and His Word. This is the major difference. Self versus God. God clearly tells us, He that finds his life shall lose it, but he that loses his life for my sake shall find it diametrically opposed one to another. Psychology is not biblical. There's no such thing as Christian psychology because Christian psychology receives their psychology from secular psychology. Very important to understand, my dear friend. Professional psychology and their underlying psychology is questionable at best, detrimental at worst, and a spiritual counterfeit at the least. So what then is a Christian to do? The, the Christian that needs help. People ask that and they forget that through all of the 2,000 years that the Church of Jesus Christ has been in existence since the death, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, there has been a care, a cure for the souls and all this took place prior to the entire advent of psychotherapy. And it came to the front again during the Reformation. During the Reformation, there were five that are called alones. And we believe these are basic to the care of souls. I was in Geneva, Switzerland, and I saw these monuments of the great fathers of the faith. And I read on these monuments, Sola Scriptura by scripture alone, sola gratia, by grace alone, solo Cristo, by Christ alone, sola fide, by faith alone, solo Deo, gloria, to the glory of God alone. This is what brought the revelation, this is what brought the religious world against those adherents of God's word and the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, friend, it's important to understand that God has a body, the body of Christ, it's called in Scripture, a body of believers to minister one to another. But more than that, He has given His Holy Spirit to every believer to come, to come together, and to live in that belief system. He has given us His Word, the Word of God, the living Word of God. We're to draw alongside one another, not one-upmanship, of any kind of a therapeutic situation where one is the expert and one is the underling. No, it's two people at the foot of the cross seeking the truth of God and the wisdom of God, dying to self that Christ himself will live through us. It never is of I, but it's through Jesus Christ. The help of God through his word, through the spirit of Christ, and then also through the ordinances of the church that he has established. The entire thing of coming together in communion, remembering the death of our Lord Jesus Christ and His resurrection, and looking for His promised return, and focusing more on God rather than focusing on what must weigh deep inside of us that we haven't discovered yet. We're continuing to grow and grow and grow in the things of God and the Spirit of God grows in us. We grow in maturity. God has given us the manufacturer's handbook for how to go about life, how to live a life 
that is truly productive, that is pleasing to him. If he didn't, then it becomes something that we would have to make up as we go along. And we don't have to do that, of course. We have the Word of God that lives and abides forever. This has been put in the hands of men and women who for the most part, at least from the writings, are anti-Christian. This is what God urged believers to do in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, in the Word of God, as you have been taught, abounding therein, with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. God has given us everything for living a godly life that we need, as we're told in the book of Colossians, again, chapter 2 and verse 10, which further tells us, you are complete in Him. Isn't that amazing? That's right, friend. We are complete in Christ Jesus. He has given us so much, and it's almost as if we become blinded to all that He has supplied and all that He's made available for us. We're told in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, it's all-inclusive, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? My friend, God will freely give us all things. God never withheld his son, but let him come to the cross, die the cruelest death ever. There are so many things. And friend, the people today are blinded to all that God has supplied. We need to go on from there and step forth. And so therefore, God continues to tell us as we move forward, there's so many, so many scriptures. And we will uh, refer to only a few because that's all the time we have. But we'll continue as, as we're told in scripture to address some of the scriptures because God has indeed entrusted this to us. Sometimes we've gotten so far away from it because we've been basically deceived, duped by so much that comes out of modern psychology and modern psychotherapy. God warns us in 2 Timothy 3.15, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith, through the Word of God, which is in Christ Jesus. It's not in psychology, it's in a person. The person of Jesus Christ, the one who created us and designed us to live. Again, God tells us in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, it's God breathed. And all of the scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, my dear friend, that's either true or it's not. It is true. God commands the believer to live their life by faith, by the Word of God, in response to the Word of God. Now, what has taken place in the world is that people have turned away from the Word of God, away from the Lord Jesus Christ and the sufficiency of Christ and the Word of God, to the inspiration of Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, rather than relying on what God has given us through His own inspiration. Now God will withhold nothing from us. Freud and Jung have nothing to give us. God's people are intimidated out of using the very thing that God has equipped us with, the Word of God. They're intimidated by a variety of things. We live in a professional environment. We have all kinds of professionals that provide services. 
And so the psychological professionals come along and people think, oh, here's another professional. And somehow they put God's people aside and God aside and God's word aside and they think that these professionals have more ability and more power to take care of your souls than these professional psychologists and psychotherapists. They have to take care of our problems, people believe. But that's not the case. That's a lie from the pit of hell. No, God has already equipped us with the tools to take care of our own problems. And one of my favorite verses, of course, found in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. No psychologist in the psycho Paris is quick and powerful. And I could say that the rest of it, but sometimes people read that, they see it, they say it, and yet they do not really grasp it entirely because, as you remember, as you go through the book of Hebrews, if you read the Bible, and you come to Hebrews 4.12, and you read that the Word of God is quick and powerful, we don't have the promises that can be proven from psychotherapists that they have something that's quick and powerful for us. Friend, we have God's Word. Now, we are the resistant ones. But if we allow God's Word to work in our lives, we discover that it is quick and it is powerful. And as you get to the end of that verse, we know that it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We are spiritual beings. Psychology does not uh, work with the Spirit. Now there, we are really getting down to it, the inner man. We're getting down to the heart, the cardia of everything. And now we have to work with only the Word of God and only the Spirit of God, because only the Spirit of God knows the heart. We do not. And it gives us an opportunity to use the Word so that the Word might be used in our life. And the Word transforms us. It renews us day by day. And this is how the Holy Spirit can convict the heart. And only He can bring conviction to the heart. And only He can work the change that needs to be done. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 follows along with this line. Where God declares to us, according as His divine power, God's divine power has given unto us all things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It's our life, our daily life. How? Through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and venture. It's all from God. God does the work. All this psychological stuff out there displaces that. It moves us away from the Word of God. It doesn't give a heart. And it doesn't give the person a heart for the very things, the very promises that God has for us, for the very thing that will enable us to accomplish. As we're told, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by His Spirit. When you put the Spirit of God aside, you lose everything because the Bible says the flesh is going to produce nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. It does not produce anything. And so this is a result of psychology and psychotherapy today. You find people going in for help and leaving as empty as they went in. Because it focuses away from God, our Creator. It focuses away from His Word. And it focuses to self. And God clearly says, He that finds his self shall lose it. But he that denies his self for my sake shall find it. You see, it's taking you away from God, taking you away from His Word, and they bring you to self and my therapist as someone who is going to change me. And so here, when we look at the Christian walk, we see that when a person has been born from above, born of the Spirit, having received the forgiveness of personal sins, and having seen the Spirit of Christ who comes and takes up His residence within us, when he has experienced the forgiveness of sins, which is the work that only God does, and He does it instantly. That is the process of sanctification. God begins to, to take you away from the things that are damning you and destroying your body and your life. God works through His Word, 
through His Holy Spirit and through the body of Christ, through your fellow Christians, the various Christians in our lives, to do what? To conform us ever to the image of Christ. He uses all of the circumstances in our lives in order to work that work of faith in us. Friend, God is in the process of creating something that's far beyond our comprehension. Psychotherapy attempts to relieve guilt, to make people feel better about themselves, to kind of deal with daily things. That's what they try to do. They cannot know that it is already God in a process that is so much greater than we can even imagine. So when we get sidetracked with all of this gobbledygook of psychotherapy, we are slowing down God's process. Yes, indeed. God uses this process as He tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Listen and listen carefully. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, that it might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Friend, you'll never hear those words from a psychologist or a psychotherapist. There is another danger here also. It is that we're not only warned about psychology and its underlying psychologies of error, but there's an entire biblical counseling movement that has come along and walking side by side with this psychologist, calling it Christian psychology, which is not Christian psychology, it's secular psychology. They're telling you the same thing. And much of the biblical counseling movement is just a kind of psychological counseling movement where you have somebody who'll show you a certificate and they'll say it's a certificate or degree in biblical counseling. And even the use of the terminology. I mean, you have words like counselor. This is terminology that comes from these people trained by secular psychologists. And as we move on, we need to know where this comes. Listen to these words. Counselor. Counseling. You have a counselee. Even the term counselee. If you look in the OED, that's the Oxford English Dictionary, you'll find that it was coined back in the 1930s. Why? Because they did not want to call a person a patient anymore. And so they came up with this term, counselee. No longer a patient, you're now a counselee. It's not a biblical term. When you talk about the counselor and the counseling that that person does, this is not what these terms meant in the Bible. And what's happened in, biblical, in the biblical counseling movement too often is you've, you've just replicated what's out there in psychology. And you've put aside the Word of God, which is quick and powerful, divided even to the sunder of the soul and spirit, the bone and marrow. What we're interested in is encouraging people to use what you already have to use the very thing that God, your Creator, the one in whom we live and move and have our being, what He has provided us with, the Word of God. We first want to make sure that the individual has been born of the Spirit. That's imperative. And has received the forgiveness of personal sins by asking our Lord Jesus Christ, God, forgive me, a sinner. I've sinned against you, I've sinned against heaven, forgive me. And God promises that if you do that, He'll forgive you. At that moment, the person has been forgiven of their sins. They've been born of the Spirit, converted to the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to make sure that the individual puts God first, that they may have the maturity of the Word of God in their life. 
even at the beginning stages of their new life in Christ Jesus, they can minister to other people. And those who are more mature in the faith, those who understand God's word more, can come alongside and help bear the burden without the fear of th having people think that they don't have a psychological degree, that they do not have a biblical counseling certificate, because it's not biblical counseling. It's bereft of the Bible. They use the psychological secular counseling. Nothing biblical about it. God makes this clear in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 2 through 13. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of what? all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Here we have one weak Christian comforting another weak Christian. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ Jesus. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual. It works in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure. They were beside themselves, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. They were between a rock and a hard place, but that didn't stop them. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but who? God who raises the dead. They took their focus away from self and put it to God where it belongs. Psychology puts your focus on you, self, which destroys you. Verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he shall yet deliver us. How marvelous is that? Ye also, helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, all the body of Christ working together, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity, and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom of psychology and psychotherapy, but by the grace of God, God giving us something we do not deserve. We have had our conversation, our way of life in the world, and more abundantly to you word, believers ministering one to another. For we write none other things unto you that what you read or acknowledge and I trust you shall acknowledge even unto the end. This information, friend, is designed to bring it down to the level where everyone can understand. Extremely important for you to understand. So the person who is not a theologian, it's for those who do not have a four-year Bible college degree. God wants us to be able to do what God has empowered His people to do through the use of His Word and by His Holy Spirit. God wants people to die to themselves so that God Himself can minister through us. It's God Himself doing the work in us. It's never you, it's always God in us who wills and does the work in us. God has created the believers, a special body of Christ. His people need to learn to work together as a body, one to another, ministering one to another. The older women, who are mature in the Word of God, 
are to minister to the younger women. Now this is not only for the benefit of the younger woman, but for the benefit of the older women as well. When we minister encouragement, when we minister to one another allowing God Himself to reveal His care, His kindness through us, it might just be something as simple as bringing someone a meal who's not able to get their own meal, taking care of someone's child while they go to the hospital, or where they have some errand to do that's very important, by giving people a ride to school, to work, to the supermarket to help them purchase groceries if they're, if they're not able or not very healthy, to sitting and listening to someone who has lost a loved one. Ministering the truth of God's Word allows God to sanctify His people, to set them apart, to be used by Him, to cause them to grow in knowledge and in God's grace, giving godly counsel, godly time, godly conversations, ministering God's Word to these individuals for whatever problems that they may be uh, going through at the time. And as we quoted from Scripture, God has given us everything that we need. Everything. He's the manufacturer. This is the manufacturer's handbook. And we can be used of Him to that end. That's right. And when you draw alongside someone, you're looking to the Lord Jesus Christ to be the counselor. He's only using your mouth. He's going to bring the conviction and the truth and the power into that person's life. And you allow God to speak and live through you. You're looking at the Word of God together. And guess who is ministered to? Both individuals now begin receiving a blessing. The one that does it and the one that's receiving. Many times we talk to people who have done this and they say that they received more out of it than the person that they were supposedly ministering to. This is what God does. My friend, God Himself is ministering to you through His Word. He's convicting you by His Holy Spirit as we look together with the person that you're trying to help, as you look together into the Holy Scriptures. It's never about the person who is kind, a uh, kind of a change agent who is going to change this other person. God, that's God's work. I think this is a lot of what people expect in counseling. They look for someone else to, who, who's going to make a change in their life. They expect a human being to bring about the changes that will make them comfortable. That will bring them peace. Only God does that. So the individual doesn't have to do anything themselves. They think uh, so someone has this magic wand and they're going to just tap them on the head with them and they're going to be transformed overnight, perform the trick that they need to be performed upon them. People talk about the hard work of psychotherapy, that this psychotherapy is, 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 is bringing a person who, the, and making the person and what they have to go through to make that person reality. And a lot of it is very painful, but it's the wrong kind of pain. Yes, indeed, the wrong kind of pain. We need to see God's work. We need to depend upon God's work to live and work this pain out through our life. Because God uses all things. All things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called, according to His purpose. You see, psychotherapy cannot produce that. And people have to go through all of these things and it doesn't produce anything. But it's the wrong kind of pain. The work of sanctification, allowing God to set us apart from living as an animal and not by His Spirit. God designed us to live by His Spirit. And at times, this life can be painful because there's painful situations in all of our lives that we need to walk through. That's evident. And as we walk with one another through the valley of the shadow of death, when we go through these dark places with one another, it's not that one person is going to fix 
this for the other person, is that we are together in Christ. We're one in Christ. We are going to see what God is going to produce in our lives. And so, as you look into the Word of God, what is the Word saying here in a situation to encourage or to direct a person? It's never about being some kind of an expert. It is a fellow believer who is looking to God's Word together with you and to the Lord Jesus Christ, and where God is using both of you to, come to minister one to another. God wants us to simply be God's instrument. Let me share with you another encouraging verse where God tells us in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And if, if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability that God gives. It's not this ability of self. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, friend, if that's not an encouragement to people, I don't know what is. When a person believes God's word and steps out and and does this and becomes a servant of God and lets God live his life through them, they find God to be faithful. But if people step out and do this and they start relying on all of this psychological garbage they picked up, forget it. They're going to be distracted away from the Lord Jesus and certainly away from his word, from the very power that's going to set them free, we're told in John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We have to trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, we're told, and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Now this is kind of a standard for ministry, as well as for allowing Christ Jesus to live out his life in us in this world. It's not that we're going to let God do whatever without us thinking, but rather that we are involving Him in everything. As we're told in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Now as we start thinking this way, and as we begin walking this way ourselves, we find the Lord to be faithful in our own lives, which encourages us to share with even more people. Sometimes people think that they have to have already become perfect before they can minister to someone else. But then there would be no one who could do it, because no one's perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. God demonstrates His power through His weakness. The weaker you are, the greater the power God will have in your life. God is going to use us where we are, he will use whatever tool He's placed in our hand. God is always found faithful if we're willing, if we make ourselves available. God fills us with His Holy Spirit. He gives wisdom. He gives insight. And what God is going to give us is His way, as opposed to all of these bogus ideas and concepts of psychology and psychotherapy that can only be destructive because they're not true. Many times people think what professional counselors and what psychotherapists have to offer, they think this is something superb, something great, wrong. If they could even hope to offer this, I think they would be the wealthiest people in the world. And what I'm referring to is the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Psychology does not produce these things. It's a spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit. God's Word provides it. 
The flesh provides destruction. The flesh profiteth nothing, we're told. Zero. As we're told in John chapter 6, verse 63. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh will produce a big zero, a big blank. It is the spirit. It's the word of God that becomes spirit and becomes life in your life. And so God is working in each person those qualities that are the fruit of the spirit. This is what we want to exercise when we're ministering to someone else. It's God working through us. The love expressed here is God's love. Not some erotic animal love that wants to go to bed with whoever walks by. God's love is not known by those who do not, who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them. Because God is love. God is not a thing. God is not some kind of mechanism that you put forth. It's a person. The agape love is a love that can never be separated from the truth found in God's Word. God promises in Galatians 5.16, this I say, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, how awesome is that? We must always recognize that if we put aside the Spirit of God in our lives, that we ourselves are subject to the same possible sin. Because that's the only fruit that the flesh can produce, is sin. What does a person need to be like if, if they're going to minister to someone else in the body of Christ. First of all, you need the Spirit of God, because it's the Spirit of God that produces the fruit of the Spirit. All of us, as believers, are to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and all our mind, and all our strength, and our neighbors, ourselves. Now, that has to be the basic thing we're striving for. But we're aiming, and only, we need to aim to Jesus Christ, His Word, and let the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the living Word living in us, to return His love to Him. As we're told in 1 John chapter 4, 7 through 12, clearly we're told, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. He's the fountainhead, it doesn't come out of us. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live, how? Through self? No, through Him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us first and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. How sweet is that? Some people who are biblical counselors sound more like Job's counselors, <laughs> bringing accusations and such things. No, friend, it's not that we have all the answers, but we want to really honor the Lord Jesus Christ in every situation. The Bible tells us, whatsoever you do in word and deed, do it all to the glory of God. We want to express the love of Christ in a situation which is never separated from His truth. Not the words that, that, uh, that come from the mouth of psychologists, psychotherapists. Now note the words that we find in First. Corinthians chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Now there's a heart of humility. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, the wisdom of psychologists and psychotherapists, but in the power of God. That, my dear friend, is what God wants us to be, an encouragement to believers as we allow Him to live His life through us and tell them to be confident in what they know, to be confident in what they've lived, 
to be confident in the work that God will do in them and through them and they will trust Him and allow Him in you to live His life through you. We must use His Word, the Bible. We must know that the Holy Spirit will convict the hearts and change lives for these individuals who truly want to change. Remember, it's important to remember these words that were told in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So many people think that they're failures when they talk to someone. Never a failure. God also promises us in first in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Psychology can never promise this. God can, and He does. And so, friend, we want to simply encourage you to believe. Believe God and let Him work His work through you. He's got a marvelous plan for your life. God makes us all competent to minister because He's the one who is working through us. And His Word will never go out in vain. It will work the work He's chosen for it to do. The only thing He desires is for us to yield ourselves to Him. The Bible not only teaches us how and what to minister, it commands us to do so. Our Lord Jesus, our Shepherd, the great Shepherd of the, chief, of the sheep He's called, has an entire flock who are hurting, hurting and they're looking for God's help through God's people. God wants us to be able to minister, and He will, if you will simply trust and obey God's Word. Make yourself available to God. Say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, come into my life, forgive my sins, fulfill all your great and precious plans that you've established for my life. Perform all the good works that you've already set aside for me to accomplish in this world. And He will. May God bless you. And may He bless you richly. Dr. John Borrell, I'd like to invite you to write to us, get in contact with us. Send us an email to our email address, A-M-M-I-E-L-J-B at gmail.com. And if you have any questions that you haven't had answers to for a while, send us your question. We'd be glad to respond to you and, and share God's Word regarding that question. And you can see for yourself and glean the answer with your own understanding. We publish a monthly newspaper. Once a month, has 16 pages filled with Bible lectures, Bible studies, of what's going on in the world today. We delve a lot into private, into Bible prophecy. Why are things happening today? Why are it's important to understand in light of the Word of God? You'll appreciate receiving this magazine on a monthly basis. If you want, if you'd like to uh, have a trial copy, we'd be glad to send you one free of charge. Write to us. We encourage you to. Today, the Bible in June. P.O. Box 1722, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. God bless you, friend. May He bless you richly.